Have you had experiences that can't be explained? Do you have questions that go unanswered? Are you searching for the truth? Since my first terrifying encounter with the paranormal at the age of five, I have been searching for these answers. My name is Chris Matheny, and I am haunted. Join me and my dedicated team as we travel to some of the most haunted locations in America. We will conduct investigations with other paranormal groups in an ongoing effort to discover what lies beyond. Thank you for joining us for tonight's episode of What Lies Beyond, A Quest for the Truth. We're going to be going to a beautiful antebellum home built in the 1830s called the Montgomery House, formerly known as the Rural Retreat. And it was built by a Dr. John Montgomery pre-Civil War, and it's a very beautiful and interesting home, so I hope you're going to stay with us, and we hope you enjoy. Dr. Montgomery was a young man going to apparently college or medical school at that time and he built the house while he was going to school. He married probably in the 1830s and had a fairly large family. Dr. John Montgomery was a very successful man in his day. He ran a plantation. He had a medical practice. He was elected to the state senate twice for his district. All the hallmarks of a successful and happy life, except for the personal tragedy. He lost two sons during the war between the states, as well as having a third permanently disfigured and disabled. I know of three sons. Two served in the war between the states. One was killed at seven pounds. Another one lost a leg at Bristow Station. Dr. John Montgomery and his wife Mary Christian built the house, Rural Retreat, which is now known as the Montgomery House, in the 1830s, just 30 years before the Civil War. Yet within a hundred years the house will have fallen into disuse, abandoned, and disrepair. Vagrants, uh, alcoholics, and drug addicts were using it as a flop house, a crash house if you will. And then there was another point in its history where it was slightly renovated. It was used as a rundown rental house. And there was a man named Mr. Andrews that lived in there. He was renting it. And he passed away in the house. He owned several dogs, and there was quite a few days went by before he was discovered. And during that time, well, his dogs got hungry. And apparently, they ate him. We arrived at the Montgomery House with high hopes and good spirits. However, as we set up our equipment for the investigation, I began to feel very irritated and upset. There was a definite oppressive feeling that began to settle over the house. We would discover later that this wasn't the only negative experience awaiting us. We saw a little girl in here a few months ago. We would like to speak with you. Now, if you feel like you're safe enough that you can come out and join us, We'd really appreciate that. And if you see that green light over there, you walk over to it and get close to it, you can make other lights light up. And you'll notice that there's a little red light right next to it. And if you go near that and you speak into it, we'll be able to hear you. So are you with us tonight? What's your name? Are you in Montgomery?
little girl, are you here? We have a little girl outside. Her name's Kelsey. She'll be up here later. How long have you been in this house? Would you care to make those lights light up? All you gotta do is get close to them. Would you like to try it? How old are you? The day that we first saw the house, I was actually riding on the back of the motorcycle and I saw the house from the road passing by and I knew that we needed to check this house out. On the way back, we stopped and Chris took several pictures of which one of them really surprised us. Now, Kimberly and I were on our way to a different location to scout for our pilot episode of What Lies Beyond. And while we were going along, she saw this house. And so we turned around to come back to it and take a look. So we got the camera out and I stood in one spot and I took three consecutive pictures. Now, unbeknownst to us at that time, we had caught something. Now, when we got home and we were going through the footage of the pictures we took, we noticed what could be a little girl's face in the window. Is this piece of audio recorded during the investigation? Further evidence of the spirit of a lost little girl? Mr. Montgomery, are you here? John? How about Henry? Magistrate Henry, are you here? I hear you were the last person to live in this house. Do you like what they're doing with the house? Trying to preserve it? Did you know that after the last Montgomery moved out, someone else owned this property? They valued you. They decided to preserve the house and give it to the Historic Society. Did you know that? At that moment, I had just seen a shadow figure dart across the doorway. Is that you? Are you in that next room? All right, are you here? Mr. Montgomery, is that you? John? Chris was a veteran as well. I understand that you were in the Revolutionary War. Is that true? Did you fight in the Revolutionary War? The War, war of 1812 for your son, I believe. Were you a soldier? Were you a commander? I was a grunt. I was a ground soldier, a rifleman. I'm proud of what I did. Proud of serving my country. How about you? Mr. Montgomery, I... Heard that you were a senator, twice. Are you proud of that? Do you think you did good work? You must be. They named the county after you. Did you hear that? Or Just some noises. Mr. Montgomery, I heard that you were a senator, twice. I understand you were a doctor. Did you and uh, did you actually care for your patients here? Uh, did any of them pass away here? This is a beautiful old house. Come and communicate. Come and communicate with us. Why are you hiding from us? You go to the rooms that we're not in. We're not trying to be disrespectful. We just want to communicate with you. Understand you had a beautiful wife named Mary. That, yeah, where's that, Mary at? Is that you? Oh. Are you in the room with us now? 
That piece of wood. Um, the piece of wood moved. Yeah. I, I heard it move an inch or two. I did too, and it was over there, and nobody was over there. Are you in that corner? It, yeah, where's it, Mary at? He's here. I feel you all around me. Why don't you come over here to these lights? Come over here. Make a move. Talk into the red one. You might want to move. Let's move those lights over here. Or the, the meters over here. Alright, I'm going to leave the recorder playing right here. Why don't you come over and speak into it? And we're going to go into a different room. Okay, I'm going to put this device right here on the mantel. I hear this rocking chair moves. You want to rock in it? Or are you in that closet? I'm getting... I'm getting a vibe from the closet. I am too. I stopped. Are you in there? We mean no disrespect. Are you in here? Make these lights light up. Come near it. Can you get in there? All right, I'm coming into your room. All right, I'm in here. There's my meter. If you're in here with me, why don't you come over and make those lights light up? I can't see them. There's more than one light. They'll all light up if you get near it. Would you like me to leave this room? If you would, make the lights light up, please. You light up just one more light, and I'll go outside for a while. How's that sound? Did you hear that? Yes, I did. We both heard a knock on the wood, but were unable to get any additional audio or video evidence. I'm going to lay this on your bed. Matter of fact, I think I'm going to lay down. Oh, this is a horrible bed. How did y'all sleep on these things? Are you here with us? Come on, make these lights light up. For real. You can communicate with us using these lights. If you'll come over and get near it, your energy will make the lights light up. Then we can ask you questions, and you can make the lights light up and give us answers. Can you do that for me? To begin the spirit box session, we set our PSB7 AM FM frequency sweep radio at the fastest rate possible. The PSB7 will scan up to 500 milliseconds. This means that the radio will scan up to several stations per second. We have found this device invaluable during investigations. This radio generates a type of white noise, which theory suggests gives an entity a medium through which they can communicate with the living. Is there someone evil in the attic? Did you hear that? Yeah. We both heard a knock in the upstairs foyer, but were unable to get any additional audio or video evidence. It would seem that the oppressive atmosphere would not be the only hardship we would have to contend with during this investigation. We would soon find out that all of our thermal and DVR surveillance footage was corrupted and unusable. We have no hard evidence to prove that all of these occurrences were related to paranormal activity. However, owing to personal experiences, we believe that these events are beyond coincidence. Come over here, prove to me that you're here. Make these lights light up. Just come to the light. All you gotta do is come to the very end of it and it'll light up. I'm on your bed. I'm 
I'm on your bed. Does that bother you? Maybe? I think I'm going to lay down and have a little nap in your bed. Does that bother you? When's the last time you had a good night's sleep? You know, we can be here all night. You know the best way to get rid of us? Show us what we want to see. Show us what we want to see. Tell us what we want to hear. Are you tired? You know, if you need some energy to manifest, there's energy all in this house. You've got batteries and all this equipment. You got power running through the walls, and you've got us. I heard that. Why are you playing games? Come on out, show yourself. What did you say? Why are you playing games? Come on out, show yourself. Was this yet another reference from a Civil War soldier? You don't know why you can't come out? Are you afraid? I'm still waiting on you to come over here and light up these lights. That really impressed me. So you guys got anything to say? This is your chance. Don't waste it. I felt you just touched me on the hand. Go ahead, say something. At that moment, I distinctly felt something brush against my right hand. Though we captured nothing, it remains a personal experience. I won't even hold it. I'm going to put it on the floor over here. Now, you don't have to worry about me. Just come near that light and the others will light up. Go ahead. Try it. I saw you do it earlier. Can you try to do it for us again? I just saw your shadow. Come on. I'll make it even easier on you. I think I know where you're at, and I'm going to help you out. Here you go. Just get close to it. Make them light up. At this moment, we captured an SBR that sounds like a little girl saying, Come see me, followed by the report of a gunshot. We came here to respect and kindness. We don't intend you any harm. We mean you no ill will. We just wanted to communicate with you. Would you like us to leave? Here we captured a menacing voice from the spirit box that seems to be saying, never will give up, just never will. Could this be the spirit of a Confederate soldier? Are you in another room? After Kimberly's question, a little girl's voice says, Mommy, or hello, followed by a male voice that seems to say, Doctor, please move out. Is this a reference to Dr. John Montgomery? Are you in another room? What do you want me to do? What do you want me to do? What did you think of the little girl we 
we brought with us. What was that? I tried to say something. After my question, it sounds as if a male voice responds with, that's the way we get you. What did you think of the little girl we brought with us? You're going to have to try better than that. Lock on harder. Do you want me to go to a different room? We decided to move into a different bedroom in order to continue our investigation. Almost immediately, we were getting clear responses to my Are questions. Are you in the attic? Who is holding you here? Spirits? Did you hear that? Yeah. Who is holding you here? At this point in our spirit box session, we began to capture multiple responses from several different voices. You will now hear the original audio in its natural state before we play it back with enhanced audio. Spirits, did you hear that? Yeah. What kind of spirit? What kind of spirit? What kind of spirit? What kind of spirit? What kind of spirit is keeping you here? Sorry. Come on, I know you're trying. This battery's about drained. We're running out of juice. Please communicate with us. Who is in the attic? Are you afraid of him? Mm, do you say no? Are you the one in the attic? What is the name of the man in the attic? We continued to hear SBRs, however most were not clear enough to be used as evidence. It sounded like he's trying to say something. Are you trying to tell me something? Are you afraid? Well, there was an orb right in front of you. I feel it. Oh, oh. Did you just grab me? I felt you touch me. Sorry I jumped like that, but I wasn't expecting it. You got me. Hoo <laughs> 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 uh, Yeah. Hoo. <laughs> yeah, you grabbed my hip. I distinctly felt you grab me. You got me. You got me. You, got, you gave me a good start. 
We were unable to debunk these orbs as dusts or bugs due to the fact that they did not move in the same manner. Dust will most often appear like snow flurries, while bugs will flutter or streak through the frame, and neither were found on any of the footage shot that night. These orbs move with a slow and deliberate motion, plus they appear to be faintly self-illuminated. The fact that Kimberly saw the orbs just before I was grabbed on the hip only serves to further validate the entire experience. As far as the investigation went, we got a lot of great responses from the PSB-7, also known as the Spirit Box. There were a lot of great direct responses, and there were times where it would go for a while repeating the last word that someone said, or the last several words someone said. Uh, there were a lot of good answers that directly related to the questions asked. Then we had Kelsey, our junior investigator. While I went in there without her, I asked that if there was a spirit, could it grab her arm when she came in? I said, grab her left arm, and lo and behold, later when she came in, she did just say that she felt something grab her left arm. And on top of that, while we were in the back bedroom, I was sitting Indian style on the floor conducting an EVP slash spirit box session, and I distinctly felt a right hand grab my hip. I felt the fingers press into my flesh as it squeezed me, and I jumped up and just about ran out of the room, but I mastered myself and I realized what was going on. Uh, it was uh, quite a shock, actually, but uh, made for a great investigation. Oh, oh. <laughs> <Whew. laughs> Only part of the way into our investigation, and the spirits of the Montgomery House were already reaching out from beyond the grave. We had seen shadow figures darting across doorways, heard objects sliding across the floor, seen orbs with our own eyes, finally being touched by an entity in the darkness. In review, we found possible evidence for the spirits of a little girl, Civil War soldiers, gunshots, and a great deal more. The Montgomery House was proving to be a hotbed of activity, and the night had only just begun. Stay tuned for The Montgomery House Part 2, Voices from the Past. You can find us at researchinstituteoftheparanormal.com, or you can also find our blog at whatliesbeyondforyou.blogspot.com.